iPhone has become an insane filmmaking tool, and this video is gonna be your complete guide to shooting video on it. We're gonna be really systematic here, covering everything from the settings you need to change, to the apps you need to download, which resolution to use, when to change your frame rates, all of the different lenses on the iPhone, how to get the most out of cinematic mode, and some of the basics of editing your video. First things first, let's configure our settings, which unfortunately you have to scroll quite a bit. I don't know why it's so low, but you go into camera, Let's start by going into formats. And by the way, I'm using an iPhone 14 Pro. So if you see a different set of options, probably means you're using a different phone. I keep camera capture at high efficiency and I'm gonna turn on Apple ProRes just so we can see what it does. I don't usually use it and I'll get into that later. Record video is where you set the preset resolution and frame rates that it's gonna default to. We're gonna dive into those more depth later, but what we're looking for right now is I want you to turn off HDR video. A little while ago, I made this incredible video that you have to watch. It's all about how to edit vertical videos in Final Cut Pro. The most common question I got back was, my footage looks weird and I don't know why. It's because people were shooting in HDR and not really understanding how it works. Most videos you watch on YouTube are edited and shot in standard dynamic range. Even if it looks amazing, it's usually SDR. HDR is pretty hard to master for, and I just wouldn't recommend trying it unless you've really done the research. This is what it looks like when I drop an HDR clip into this project timeline. I can make it look pretty normal by changing a few settings, but here's what it looks like if I just shoot it in SDR. It's basically normal out of the box with no extra work. If you want to dig into HDR or Dolby Vision, which there's different kinds of HDR, it's quite confusing. This isn't the video for it. So today we're just gonna shoot SDR. I do like to set the preset of cinematic mode to 24 frames per second. That's new on the iPhone 14. In preserve camera settings, I like to turn on creative controls or remembers things like the aperture that you use in cinematic mode. And I recommend turning on the grid. So inside your camera, you can see these three lines that just help you set up shots. Yeah, there it is. Now let's talk about apps for shooting video. One that you've probably heard about is Filmic Pro. This is the choice that a lot of professionals use. I don't end up using it because, well, a bunch of reasons. First of all, let's put a photo in here so we have something more interesting to look at than the desk. Most of all is that the interface drives me crazy. I forget how to do basic things like, how do I just move the exposure up and down? If I turn on stabilization, it actually kind of delays the image compared to the default camera app. I move and then the stabilization moves a moment later. And it also feels like Apple doesn't give third-party apps the same access to their smart HDR algorithms, so sometimes this will be clipping highlights when the default camera app won't. Basically, I go to Filmic Pro for more advanced features like locking the white balance, if you want to shoot and log. There's a bunch of specific stuff, but it's definitely not my general day-to-day -day app. An alternative with an interface I like more is from Moment. This is what the interface looks like. It's easier for me to find my way around, makes a little more sense to my brain, but suffers from the same third-party setbacks. So what I end up doing is using the default camera app. Another app I'll recommend that you download is CapCut. That's what we're gonna be using to edit, but that'll be at the end of this video. So let's take a look at the default camera app. I'm only gonna be showing you the features you need to know. If you want a complete breakdown, I did do a video that goes way more in depth for photo and video shooting, all of the features and hidden menus. So you can click that, there'll be a link at the end of the video. Huge thanks to Devante for going so hard in this video today. Be sure to follow him over on Instagram. Before we hit record, we'll have to make a few decisions. Let's start with resolution. Right now we're in 4K. You can tap this button over here and it will switch back and forth between HD and 4K. Not sure if you can see it here, but I've always found it weird that 4K actually crops out a tiny bit wider than HD does. I think some people would give the advice to shoot 4K everything because you want the best quality no matter what, but you will fill up your phone pretty quickly if you do that. So I think it's worth thinking about certain situations that 1080 totally makes sense. For example, when you're shooting vertical video, often 1080 is the right choice. Most vertical videos are shot that way because of social media. And when you upload Instagram or TikTok, it's only 1080. No matter how good your original source footage looks, they're gonna compress it and you don't see any better results, whether it was 4K or 1080 in the first place. If you're going to do a more complicated edit, there can be reasons to shoot 4K vertical. So for example, this travel vlog, I do all sorts of cropping and stabilization. And in those cases, you just want some extra resolution. And by the way, if you wanna see some cool vertical videos about photography and technology, I'm Stallman over on Instagram. I choose 4K when I'm shooting horizontal videos because then it's more likely to either be on YouTube or watched on a big screen TV in the future, or of course, just to preserve life's most important memories. If you've been wondering if you need to shoot in the ProRes file format, that's a good sign that you don't need to worry about it at all. This really is a pro feature. It's a great codec, but for now its performance advantages are really limited on the iPhone. It would only really help if you were shooting in logs, so you'd have reduced banding, 
or certain production environments are really specific about their file formats, but you probably don't have to worry about it. The files are enormous and you probably won't see a quality difference. <laughs> When it comes time to choose your frame rate, that's a bit of a battle. Depending which filmmaker you talk to, you're going to get a different answer. Changing it is easy enough. You just tap the number in the corner. It'll either be 24, 30, or 60. My rule of thumb is if I'm making something that's like a short film and I want it to look cinematic, I shoot in 24. If it's for social media, I shoot in 30, and I only shoot 60 if I plan to slow it down. Faster frame rates are for slow motion, and it drives me so crazy when people use 60 and play it back at normal speed. You shouldn't do that ever. It just, it looks awful. It makes the world look like a video game. iPhones offer a few more frame rates, including 120 and 240 frames per second. To get there, you slide across the bottom until you're in slow-mo, and then up here in the top left, that's where you change between 120 and 240. These are really fast frame rates. Up until a few years ago, even most professional cameras couldn't shoot this fast, so I still think it's amazing that it's on cell phones. So let's see the difference. This is slow motion at 60 frames per second. This is 120 frames per second. And this is 240 frames per second. I only go to extreme slow motion if I really need to slow it down because 4K 60 looks way better than the 240 frames per second. It's so much softer when you slow it down like that. But the downside with 4K 60 is there's no way to slow it down until you're in editing software later. You can only play it back at full speed in the default camera app. If you ever need to shoot video of yourself and you're having trouble lining up the shot, I've got a great trick to see exactly what you're gonna do. But first, let's talk about protecting your phone. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Caseify. Whatever creative masterpiece you're working on, you wanna make sure your phone is protected, especially if you're running around a skate park. Inevitably, one day it's gonna drop out of your hand or your pocket and hit hard concrete and you wanna make sure it's safe when it does. So they've got three different styles of cases. This is the impact case, which I've shown you many times before. Case Defy supports a lot of my iPhone coverage, which I really appreciate. And if you're someone that lives a little more dangerously, they have the ultra impact case, which has some stronger rubber edges to protect it when it hits the ground. Or if you just need the ultimate in protection, no matter what you're doing, you wanna look at the bounce case. It has up to 21.3 feet of drop protection, which is six times military grade, and also features raised bezels around the camera and the screen to make sure they never make contact with the ground. They've thought a lot about how phones drop, like usually they land on the corner, and this extra protection will absorb most of the impact. And it's also built from their new EcoShock material with their twister design that makes it even more protective. This increases the drop height it can fall from and makes it more abrasion resistant while still being made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials. When you click on the link in the description, you're gonna see that there are a ton of different styles and options to choose from on their website, from a diverse set of designers and artists that have created some beautiful designs. You can customize it with your own name, text, whatever you want it to say. And they've also got a new utility strap to keep your phone accessible at all times. So now it's time to hit that link in the description. Go to casetify.com slash Tyler Stallman, see which case is right for you, and you're gonna get 15% off your order. Here's an epic trick for shooting video of yourself if you got nobody else to line up the camera. I mean, it looks like I'm in frame, but I don't really know. So here's how I can check. If you have an Apple Watch, it's super easy to sync it with your camera. So you just press the camera icon and it connects wirelessly to show you exactly what your phone sees at that moment. Because that one times camera, the main camera is much better than the selfie camera. So this is how you get the most quality on your iPhone. Even for professional video, wireless transmitters are expensive and rare. And now it's recording and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't need a camera person behind my iPhone. And if you need some accessories to hold on to your phone, keep it clamped in one place. I'll have some links in the description below. Now let's take a look at choosing between some of the lenses available on your phone. On an iPhone 14 Pro, I've got actually four options. I got the 0.5 zoom, which is ultra wide, one times on the normal lens, two times, which is cropping into that lens, and three times for telephoto zoom. Most importantly, this is like my best photography tip for iPhones, constantly clean your lenses. Look at what happens when you have a dirty lens. Like one fingerprint will completely ruin your shot. So the whole time you're shooting, just keep wiping them down over and over. <laughs> Regardless which model of phone you have, the 1X main lens is always gonna have the highest quality. The sensor is a little bit bigger, the lens is a little bit sharper, everything does look better when you shoot at that 1X lens. And it's a great default. Pretty wide, but not so wide that things will ever really look distorted. It's really useful and I think you should shoot with it most of the time. And although 1X might have the best quality, 
I think 0.5 is the most fun. This is the ultra wide introduced in the iPhone 11 and I love it. It is such a wide lens, like on a traditional mirrorless camera with a larger sensor. This is 13 millimeters, which is wider than what most people even buy. It's so wide and looks really good. Apple does a great job of cleaning up the distortion in the corners. You do have to be a little careful shooting it in low light because the sensor isn't quite as good. It's not quite as sharp but it looks awesome and I use it all the time, especially for skate videos. It was so good for this shoot. If you've got an iPhone 14, you now have a 2X option as well. Like I said, this is cropping in to the main lens, so you're still preserving a lot of image quality. It looks really good even in 4K. I wouldn't be afraid to use it even though it's a crop, but I think the 3X lens is actually really underrated. It's not as sharp as the others and people notice that the quality is a little bit worse, but you know what, often, you don't notice, especially on social media. And that extra reach that three times has gets some really dynamic looks that you can't get on the other lenses. The more you zoom in, the more that the difference of movement between the background and foreground become apparent. This is kind of thought of as like the Michael Bay look where he'll swoop around in a helicopter and the background zooming by as the person stays in one place. If you don't already use the three times telephoto lens in your filming, I highly recommend experimenting with it. And then of course there's the selfie lens, which is incredibly useful. Not as high quality as some of the others, but it got a lot better in the iPhone 14. In fact, if you spend a lot of time creating videos for social media, especially if it's your job, this is enough reason to upgrade to the 14. The selfie lens looks a lot better than the 13 or 12 or any that came before it. And I think that can be worth the upgrade. And of course, it's just way easier to frame up the shot because you can see what you're doing. Let's flip the camera over. So this is technically a better shot, but I actually don't know when I'm in frame or not. I could also switch to the ultra wide lens, which is kind of the ultimate vlogging lens. Like you can really see everything in it. It looks cool, but it is still kind of challenging that I don't know when I'm in the center. I don't really know what I'm shooting. iPhones also feature incredible optical and digital stabilization. So everything you shoot is pretty crazy smooth compared to what it would look like without it. I think we take it for granted a lot of the time. We just hold the phone up and I mean, it looks good, but you forget that the phone is doing a lot of work to make that footage look way more smooth than it would unless you had a gimbal, which I don't really think you need anymore if you're shooting with a phone. And now the iPhone 14 pushes this way further. We've got action mode, which massively stabilizes the shot. So I would only use this if you are running like I was and really kind of out of control, camera shaking all over, that's when it's useful. If you're able to walk steadily and sort of just control your hands, don't worry about it. Regular stabilization has your back. Action mode is for action scenes and it just works so well. Like I'm really impressed by it. I've heard a few people complain about that they wish that it wasn't cropping in so much and they refer to this as if they should be using the pixels more effectively because iPhone 14 has a 48 megapixel sensor. When you switch to action mode, it does change your maximum resolution to 2.8K. This should not be a reason to avoid action mode. 2.8K is lots of K. The thing to be aware of is that it crops in quite a bit. So now your 1X lens is not so wide anymore. In fact, by default, it switches to the ultra wide lens. So just be aware of that, that you're losing some of that image quality. If you're in a lower light situation, you might want to switch back to the one X lens, but it makes the three times lens look amazing. Just handheld. It's weird that zooming in this far looks this steady. And now cinematic mode. I tested this pretty extensively on my recent Pixel 7 versus iPhone 14 video, and the iPhone has started to look really good. In the iPhone 14, it can now shoot at 24 frames per second in 4K. And this is enough reason that I'll start using it in my YouTube videos a lot more than I did in the past. 1080, you could see that it was a bit softer, but now it just does blend in very well with other real camera footage. Apple changes the bokeh the same way a real camera does by using f-stop. So I think it defaults to something like 2.8, which is a little over the top to my taste. If the subject is, I don't know, a few feet away, I'll usually turn it to maybe 4.0 or 5.6. Because of the settings we did at the very beginning of this video, it's gonna remember that and always shoot with that higher aperture and look way more realistic. If you find that your cinematic shots are just looking too blurry and fake, you do have a few options in post. You can go to edit and either change where the focus is, so I can move it to his face, or I can change that f-stop by making it less blurry and then save it to the file. 
When it's time to edit your video, I've got a whole playlist about Final Cut Pro and starting right from the beginning, all the basics, everything you need to know all the way to an advanced TikTok video. But for now, I'm gonna use my phone and I just started using CapCut. I used to use Video Leap, but CapCut is way cleaner and easier. First, you just gotta add your videos and then tap on the clip, grab the handlebars, make it shorter. Do that for everything. You can split a clip to use different parts of it. And it's so smart that the audio sources actually can sync up with TikTok. So if you log in, it can download TikTok sounds and import them right back into CapCut. Now, if you wanna keep going deeper, learn how to push Apple's camera app to the limits, it's time to tap on that video, give it a watch, and I'll see you guys over there.